Alright, good morning. Buenos dias. Buenos, buenos dias. Alright. Take your Bibles, if you would, to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Bring a message titled The Destroyer. One of the, uh, the biggest wiles or tricks of the devil is getting individuals to resign the fact that he doesn't actually exist, amen, that he is, if he does exist, he certainly wouldn't mess with me, or if he does exist, you know, I could see him coming from afar, it, 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 his influence in my life won't affect me, uh, and that's simply the fruit and ignorance of individuals that clearly don't know their Bible well enough, and, and, and do themselves and their individuals, the individuals rather that are that are part of that family or part of that church or part of that community that will be on the receiving end of of what that individual, what that being is capable of doing, amen, in the lives uh, of their people, amen. Uh, it It's a sad testimony in America today given the liberty that we have that instead of uh, utilizing the the opportunities God's blessed this country with to do better, step up, win souls, uh, uh, you know, uh, preach on the street like if we have an opportunity after church today to be able to do. Instead, we've kind of taken a back seat to a lot of that, and uh, the importance of doing the right thing kind of comes with whenever we get around to it type stuff. And so it's my job as a pastor, regardless of, of, of the response, or regardless of the, the consistency or the lack thereof, to keep on hitting the, the reality that there is a real devil out there, that there is a real enemy out there. And the interesting part and the, 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 the truth that God Almighty has that in control and the relationship that the devil has with God and, and how that works out with uh, within the confounds or confines rather of scripture. Father, thank you so much for Jesus Christ again. Do we pray already? No, sir. Father, thank you for the liberty you've given us, Lord. We plead the blood. Uh, we thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ. I pray for a hedge of protection about your saints. Lord, I pray for this church. Lord, I pray that we'd recognize the opportunity you've given us here and uh, not take it for granted, Father. We don't want our doors closed. We don't want our ministry to fold. Uh, we want to represent. We want to recognize the fact that you've given us the grace to be able to, to handle, amen, and move forward, Lord, after maybe the destroyer comes within our, 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 our house and our lives and, and within the ministry. God, that we always had that ability to look towards thee. Father, we could look towards thee with a hedge of protection or for a hedge of protection, and or father if there's a lesson to be learned and if if this devil is the servant father that needs to to change our lifestyle that we look to you for our recovery and god we just thank you for jesus christ in jesus name amen, amen. Job chapter one Job chapter one starting in verse six and again uh uh, I remember when I had gotten saved, I, I didn't understand the reality of this relationship that God had with the devil. I always took it, it took it as if uh, uh, the devil was always on the run and God was always after him. And like at the end of the movie, uh, the, the, the bad guy would go ahead and get James Bond or Batman and tie him up and put him in a cave. But somehow he escaped like the death, burial, and resurrection. And then near the end of the movie, they go ahead and grab a hold of him and, you know, throw him off a mountain. And ultimately, the devil gets cast into the lake of fire. What I didn't know until I got around to reading it uh, was that the devil and God actually have conversations. And it's not just a conversation, because I would have thought, too, that, well, then, if he was right there, get him. But it's a continual type of relationship that they have. That's why it's very important to trust the way God says, says things in his book as opposed to your own understanding. And the reality of a lot of what you are reading in this Bible, that because God is at the, he is the king of the mountain, it's, it's God that then has this control over the devil. And interestingly, 
utilizes him for his purpose as well. So that threw me. Uh, uh, however, it didn't take long. I just said, okay, Lord, uh, I acknowledge that there are a lot of things in this Bible that I don't understand. There are a lot of things in this scripture that, uh, that I, I, I can't, I have a hard time rather wrapping my head around. But I do know this very simple thing. You're right. And in every instance in life, you're right. And the way things are handled, it's handled right. And so I then, by faith, through this book, just kind of, okay. And now, now the, 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 the reality that you have then, the responsibility that you have, is you need to put that in practice yourself. Why? Because this devil here, you'll see real quick here in the book of Job, uh, he's real anxious, man, to get a hold of you. Uh, he's likened unto a serpent. He's likened unto a dragon in the Bible. He's likened unto a roaring lion, Peter talks about. Uh, and he's, he's walking about seeking whom he may devour. The sad reality of Christians today is that they don't get that. They just kind of this kind of whistle while you work type deal and just, you know, okay, I can do this uh, whenever I get around to it. Uh, I, I, I read the, the account. I don't know if you guys are, are history buffs at all, but like the first account, the first major battle of, of the Civil War, right, was Bull Run. It, I think they had the Fort Sumter thing prior to, but the, the real, the, the blue and the gray type battle was Bull Run. And the interesting thing about that was the way that, one, the citizens handled it and the way the, the armies handled it. More so the Yankees, amen, and, and the local populace. Uh, they kind of looked at that like, well, that's something entertaining. So what you read about were the people at the, in the town, they all rode their coaches and stuff and had picnics and they went up on the hill and they wanted to watch, you know, whatever, the matinee. They wanted to see the, you know, the armies doing their deal, and they kind of handled that like I guess a typical Christian would handle, you know, a DVD or or, or a typical uh, sporting event. Uh, as the uh, Union Army was approaching the battlefield, Amen. You read accounts where the soldiers, Amen, were picking berries and stuff on the way to the field, and they had no idea what was ahead of them, Amen. And, and interesting, and of course, depending on your perspective, uh, that wound up being a complete route uh, for the Confederates at that time. And, and uh, they called them the Blue Bellies, amen. The Yankees uh, got chased all the way back to Washington, and there was a mad dash. It was a route, and sadly, the, the, the local uh, community got caught up in the, in the, in the panic. Amen. And people are getting trampled. Amen. They're getting uh, the their buggies were getting flipped over. And again, that's the the lack of understanding what was out there. It was the lack of understanding about what was about to happen. And sadly, Christians in America today, especially with the prosperity that we've enjoyed for so long, Amen. Uh, they just when when the real trouble comes, they're just simply not prepared for it. Look at Job chapter one. Look at verse six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? And again, that's the typical response of the devil. Is he's that one. If there was a sign of the devil, again, contrary to Black Sabbath and all of Hollywood, it's, it's probably not an upside-down cross, more so than it is a question mark. Amen. You know, the devil's job is to constantly pepper doubt within your life of why, why things are the way they are. You need to be a Bible believer. I, I, I can't help you other than just telling you over and over. I can give you my testimony. You can hear the preaching of other individuals. Amen. Hopefully you get on board with the fact that when God says something, he says it for a reason. Amen. Verse 10. Hast thou, hast not thou rather made an hedge about him and about his house? That's why we often end prayers with uh, terms like a hedge of protection, recognizing that God Almighty... Uh, uh, provides the peace and safety, right? Safeties of the Lord, the Bible says. And so that's where you get that in verse 10. Has, has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? 
Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Now, the devil recognizes that. What the devil recognizes is that when God's hand is on your life, then, then things are much better, amen? And so when God Almighty asks and presents Job to this satanic being here, this devil, this destroyer, amen, he recognizes that. And he's like, well, you know what, God? The only reason why he's like that and why he's doing right is because, and rightly so, right? Verse 10, God put a hedge of protection around this man's life. Now, I'll tell you, man, the reason why you're here today, the reason why you can walk on your own two feet, the reason why you can process, amen, the importance of being in a Bible-believing church on a Sunday like so many should be, amen, is because God Almighty has given you that ability to process that. Uh, let God, and you'll see very quickly when God tell, turns to this devil and, and God takes his hand off of that. And watch how quickly things change and can change in an individual's life. I'm trying to tell you, man, that there's a destroyer out there and there's something you need to, to, to be mindful of. Just because the last however many days, weeks, and months has been pretty good and you've kind of gone through some speed bumps in life or might have been some, some, some discomfort or whatever, know that any given day that can be a whole lot worse. It could grow tenfold, sevenfold, or whatever. It can change, and all that is is then God Almighty. See, that's the sovereignty of God type stuff. This is God that's in control, not to be confused with the satanic teaching of Calvin, whatever. But that's not what I'm talking about. But understand that there's a devil right there. And I didn't understand that. It took me a minute, but I get it. Okay, Lord. I still don't. Oh, let me say it like this. I still don't understand that. Why don't you just snatch him right there, amen? And that's the, that's the part of, you know, the, the naysayers about these, these, this Bible and the naysayer about Christianity, you know, because they lean to their own understanding as well. The Bible said, and we say this all the time, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit, neither can he because he's spiritually discerned. Well, if you're in the flesh then, man, guess what? You also are spiritually discerned. And you're blind about the realities of what's around you. And we get into a lot of that probably like on Sunday school or whatever on Wednesdays about these beings and these different things out there that are here to hurt you. They're here to destroy you. They're after your kids. These devils, these demonic forces, man, they're after your wife. They're after your husband, amen. They affect you. It is taken for granted because the devil shows up in the third chapter of this Bible. That there are satanic forces out there. There are things out there that you can't possibly understand outside the interpretation of the Holy Spirit of God as you are reading it in this Holy Bible. Amen? Verse 11. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he'll curse thee to thy face. And the devil understands that too because the devil's been studying human nature. The devil knows you, man. I, and that idea that somehow you come in and, you know, lackadaisical about your Christianity, man, and your level of importance or whatever, here one day, gone another. I was just sitting here, and off the top of my head, there was 13 people that I knew should have been here today. 13, man. And they're not. Why is that? I, you know, I, we can go through that whole deal. You know, your, your employer goes through that as well. They got an HR department with a policy and procedure on how and when and, 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 and uh, how many sick days you have as far as when work starts, when work ends, how you take days off, how are sick days, how are vacations worked out or whatever. So, so you know that as a Christian, amen. You know your level of responsibility, but I'm here to tell you. Well, if there's ever a conversation in heaven about you, now I don't know if that's the case. I know he talked about Job, and I believe there are others that God talks about and God presents, or maybe ministries as a whole. I like to think that, that, that Victory Baptist Church was on the map. I really do. I like to think that, man, we actually matter in the grand scope of things. I'm not sure that's the case with a lot of ministries because what little I know about it, it's hard to get any truth, if at all. It's all about me, and it's all about flesh, and it's all about as much world as we can cram into a service as we possibly can. As if, you know, being out of church, like for the vast majority of your week, which when I mean out of church, it's just that there is no church that day. And, and knowing how much world is already being uh, saturated, amen, within the confines of your brain pan. Amen. All the music and the satanic influence that are being piped in. Amen. And the devil's interesting has us paying for it. 
that comes in right through your living room, right? And so when you do finally have a, a, an opportunity, you finally have this opportunity in a busy week to be able to step aside and be on the receiving end of some Bible-believing preacher, man, it just seems that, well, you know what, couldn't quite make it again. And then again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Now, if this is true, there's a devil there that knows, man, as soon as God takes his hand off your life, you're going to turn on him uh, uh, like nobody's business, amen? The devil knows that had it not been for God's grace in your life, there's, there, God, the devil sees that inside of that old nature of yours, there's a person that loathes God Almighty. What I mean by loathe, that word there, it's, it's like a hatred there that you don't want anything to do with his book. I'm talking about saved, Bible-believing Christians. You don't want nothing to do with this God. You don't want nothing to do with any ministry that he's presented in front of us. The excuses come out by the bookload of why we can't handle what Paul says is your reasonable service to serve God. I thank God this is not the Old Testament. I thank God I don't pastor a ministry, man, that will require us to get on horses Amen. Storm villages and storm castles and shoot flaming arrows and have to cut people's heads off, man. Why? Well, <laughs> with all due respect to this, this uh, Facebook Christianity that we got going on, this all this grandiose idea about how great this big old Christian movement is in the United States of America, uh, there's a very, there's a huge lack of faithfulness in this in this this thing we call Christianity. It's huge. And so if this ever turned physical, man, we'd be steamrolled. We're already being steamrolled now. And the expectation that God has for this church, I mean the local ministry or the body in general, at least in the United States of America, man, is, is what exactly? I don't know. What, 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 what's, I mean, I don't know. It's just not a whole lot going on. And again, your prayer should be, Lord, if that's lacking, if there's a lack of commitment, there's a lack of fire, if there's a lack of stick to in my Christianity right now, if I'm not looking at this right, God, can you help me maybe? You think maybe? And God will do a quick uh, uh, 360 around that heart of yours. And if you're sincere about it, he'll give you the means to be able to step up. He'll give you the means to be a better you, man, a better Christian, amen, a better member of Victory Baptist Church. However, the devil knows, man, there's a side of you that, that he ain't taking seriously. And the devil knows that, guy, had it not been for the fact that God Almighty uh, keeps a level of health uh, within your life, that, that at least you can come to, come, to, come to church with two legs, go ahead and let it be that, that one day God put you in a car accident, man, and you lose something. I've known, uh, when I was in Bible school, there's a guy by the name of Brian O'Shanna uh, who, who, from what I remember, and I remember it like it was yesterday, that I don't know, remember Brian? He was, in, he was like this genius, but got in a car accident, right? And so after the fact that he couldn't, could barely walk, he could barely talk, I took him five or six years to finish Bible school, amen, although he finished, right? And then on top of all that, it was like, in whatever it's called, he can't sleep. What is that? You're like, well, I've had a restless night, and there have been times because of whatever's going on at work and whatever might be going on within the family that you're losing sleep or whatever. I get all that. But what is it to just to make a blanket statement is I don't sleep. I don't even understand that. And the guy would celebrate and praise God because he'd get in an hour or two. I remember those, like these prayer praise things that we do here. Well, you better learn to count your blessings, Christian. And, and man, I, I'm glad you're here. But I, get, I do get disappointed in the fact that we there should be. And, like, again, I wrote these little one, little two, little three, little Indians, four, little five. And why, where are all these people at, man? I say that not only because, man, it is very encouraging when everybody that should be there is, just like it would be at work. Just like when you present a certain something, man, and then everybody you've, you've invited shows up. Okay, so when that's the opposite, and you are a, a supervisor, administrator, and then you have half of your crew calling out, and this going on, that going on, I tell you, man, it affects your administration. I know it. I've been there. I've seen it. I see, you know, the ladies that are running our Christian school, man, and I try to, 
uh, be sensitive about the fact, but I know often what they're going through with the this corona, this fake stuff that goes on, and all this this misinformation that goes on in and out of, of of the county, and how this works and that works. And I get it; it's very challenging, man. It's very, it's very the 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 the, the way I looked at that back in the day when when I walked up, Lord bless me with this. It's going up the ladder type thing. And, man, it was like almost every other year, man, I was getting a $5,000, $10,000 bump. And it was just like, wow, the Lord just dumping all this stuff out. It was because of faithfulness. It was because of that when the boss says do something, man, you look at it like, wow, you picked me out of everybody else. Instead of, oh, my God, why did you pick me out of everybody else? Right? And it's the attitude that, that you have, that the right attitude, rather. Amen. And so as this ministry is is what it is in South Florida and what our responsibility, there's a real devil out there just looking to shut. If again, and uh, if we're not on the map, then we're not getting anybody's attention. And we're just kind of going through. We got a little shirts on and whatever. And we're like what we said in high school, nothing but a bunch of posers, right? And it looked like you were in a rock band, but you couldn't play the instrument. You look cool on paper. You look cool with that on that picture. It almost looked like you knew what you were doing, amen. And I think there's a lot of that within Christianity. And when the pressure comes, yeah, that's why they call that in, in the hospital, they call it a stress test. And they put you, they want to see really what's going on there. And they hook up a couple wires and they put something in your mouth. They got you on the treadmill and you're doing like this. And the idea is to put enough pressure on you so that if there is something that's there just kind of below the surface... That level of pressure is going to pop out, right? It'll do that. You do that as a mechanic, right? You hook some pressure up to the hoses, and then you just keep turning on, and then bam, the bad hose or the crack gets exposed, right? The devil knows this. The devil knows, look, if, if, if God were to take his hand off you for whatever reason, amen, then the first thing that's going to come out of your mouth is, is, is all sorts of cursings and whatnot, verse 11. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he'll curse thee to thy face. Verse 12. That's right under the surface, man. And that's with everything going well. God knows, or this devil knows that, man. Go ahead and let that, let, let God just kind of turn on you, man, and just take his hand off you. But the reality of it is, I'm not sure if you read the read or, or picked up on the language there. Uh, look at verse 11. And who put forth whose hand? Even the devil knows that God has a top spot there. He knows that, you know, whether you're going to use me to do it, God, I know it's going to be your hand that either one protects your people or you turn your hand against your people. Now, it might be that that turning your hand is the use of this destroyer, this character right now, but ultimately, who has the upper hand? When you read verses like study to show thyself approved unto God, that approval rating that you have, right? The approval rating, the president's approval rating or product got five stars or whatever like that. You should at, 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 at least a hundred times a day ask for that feedback from your creator. Lord, how are things going here between you and I? How is it, Lord? Do you think you and I are okay? Are there any issues? Because if you believe half of what's being said in a verse like this, or half of what's being said in this chapter here, or this relationship that the devil has with God Almighty and these sons of God sitting around doing whatever they're doing, amen, your life can change just like that. I don't know if you're into that, man. I'm not into that. What I want is to win. I want success, amen. And I know that comes through trials. I know that comes through tribulations, amen. And what I don't want is be caught up in the tribulation to find out right in the middle of it that God ain't with me when it happens. It's because of my lack of commitment or my lack of devotion towards the things that I know. Where I don't understand everything that goes on in Washington. And, you know, this Trump, the plan, who, however that's going to work, doesn't look like that thing's going to pan out. And if it does, it does, okay. But the reality of it is, do you know what you're supposed to be doing as a Christian? Are you, do you know what your role is here at Victory Bad? Do you have one? Or do you have a level of responsibility? Is there a, a, a sense of sacrifice, amen? Are you bringing that to the table? Well, you as a soldier should recognize that's just a gimme. And it might be that you just got saved last week. It might be that, 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 that you're just now coming around and hearing some of this for the first time, but I, I, I'm not sure if that's true or not. But Lord, whatever it is, I, I, I want to be there. That's the attitude you should have. Whatever it is you want me to do, Lord, I'm tired. You, but, but I know this also. If you're not tired of mediocrity, 
you ain't going to change. And if you're not tired of underachieving, you ain't going to change, amen? There's not going to be that. It has to come from somewhere. Where is it? Is it that we believe that we're just this some inanimate object that God Almighty is sitting back? That's why for, to a lazy Christian, Calvinism is very, very, very appealing. It means that it really isn't up to me to go out there on the street this afternoon and tell anybody about Jesus Christ because everything's been preordained. So whether I come to church or not, it doesn't matter. Well, that's not that Bible. We rightly divide the word of truth here, and you'll never hear that ridiculousness coming out from this pulpit, at least from myself and or the people that I know that are going to come and preach for you guys. You're going to find out real quick, man, whosoever will, let them come. You're going to find out real quick, man, that the responsibility that you have is your responsibility, amen. It's your responsibility to pull up your pants, amen, pull your boots up, whatever, and put on your big boy pants. However that works, that's your responsibility. But I know this, man, there's something out there that's looking forward to your demise. There's some things out there right there that, that understand how man works. Well, if you don't, they do. God automatically knows, and I get that. He wrote a book about it, amen, the B-I-B-L-E. But the reality of it is, there's a destroyer out there, there's a being out there that God Almighty uses directly or indirectly, man, and turns things loose. And if nothing else, if you can't connect the dot with all that and see how, and, and to acknowledge how the devil works, there's the wild part about it. It might have just been God all along anyway. The same God Almighty that loved the world, that gave His only begotten Son, God, that we love, and you put the agape love and all these different hearts and stuff and the fish on the back of your car, whatever that was supposed to mean. Or rejoice to do you harm and destroy you. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Just like that. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. You notice, man, the devil didn't even respond back to God like, Okay, thank you. He's like a wild animal, man, just biting at the bit to mess you up, to destroy you, to get a hold of you, amen? And that should frighten you. You ever heard of the term, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom? Right, that's Bible. And if, 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 if it's that you fear more so your wife, or you fear your husband, or you fear your boss, or you feel the government, fear the government more so than the creator of all of that, you got, a, you, got a, you got a misconception, amen, as far as this Bible is concerned. If being out of place, man, bothers you at work, and you know that if you're not at a certain spot at a certain time, man, you can get terminated. So you work extra hard to make sure that you're there on time and you're doing whatever they're paying you to do because you recognize there's a mortgage, there's a car payment, you have obligations, amen, FP&L and all your good buddies to keep writing you all these love letters, amen. And you make sure you're the employee of the month because of all that stuff. Yet when it comes to God Almighty, man, you you don't have enough common sense or, or enough energy, amen, to fulfill what little God has you to do during the course of the week. God doesn't require 24 hours from you, man. I don't know where you're thinking. Why do you think that? Why would you think that, that showing up to a certain, just to the little things. I know pastors often, or maybe it's just me, just constantly beat the horse about being where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. I guess it's because that's one of the main areas where I can determine, because man look at on the outward appearance. If you can't handle the very simple stuff, man, the expectation that when you're not in church, I can see where your pastor was like all about go find out what they're doing on Facebook and go find out, because because the level of confidence that you have when the the the, the stuff, the expectations, the simple stuff rather aren't being met. God knows what's going on out there. God knows what's going on in your life, man. What's going on behind closed doors, somewhere in the dark, away from other people of God. I don't know. Now, it's my role to keep in the book as best I can. My role is to have my wife and thank God for it. She prays for me, man, to get through this stuff because it gets challenging, man. I'll be honest with you. One day, if you guys get called to preach, man, you're going to find that the obligations that you have, amen, uh, sometimes, man, they can feel very over overwhelming. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. It's good to be saved, correct? Yes, sir. All right, man, but there's something out there that wants to destroy you. And, man, as a husband, uh, it's my responsibility to lead, man. And oftentimes I crack. I buckle, man. And thank God for, thank God for the whole, you know, uh, 
uh, the just man falls seven times deal and gets back up. But eventually, man, you know, you got to stop falling for the same okie doke. You're supposed to learn from your mistakes. If you recognize it's this tactic or that tactic that keeps you off balance, then don't go that way. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, the, uh, what would they say? The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect it to, for a different outcome or however that thing goes, man. And that goes with Christianity. If you do the exact same thing and your same lifestyle over and over again, man, and, and you're expecting 2021, 2020 is almost over, man. And, you know, this whole, oh, it's crazy and the memes of all these weird pictures. Man, I, I hadn't really missed, I never missed, let me look at it like this. 2020, I didn't miss a paycheck. I might have missed work, but we compromised and whatever, and we did what we still, but I never missed a paycheck one time, and I was not in the hospital. And our Victory Baptist Church never closed. Right. Well, who's responsible for that? Nobody, it's just us. Hmm. Yeah, okay, because you're wrong. Okay. All right, Proverbs chapter 6. What's out there? I don't know, man. There seems like a lot of things out there. And it seems like stuff like this Job deal that God has his hand on or off. And if he takes his hand off of you, man, even the devil recognizes, boy, you're in pretty good space right now. He's looking at you, man, and you got a car, and you got health, and you got a mom, and you got a, a, a wife, and you got a dad, and you got a whatever. You can go down the list. And I know, man, etc. all this stuff. I get it. Things happen, though. The wages of sin is what? All right, don't forget that. All right, look at verse 5. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 5. What are we talk about? Man, there's something out there. We won't call him the destroyer. I don't know. He's called the destroyer. There are these things called the destroyer. The devil's out there. I know that. You got God out there. I know that. Amen. And then I know that there are responsibilities for you to pay attention as a Christian. You better pay attention, Christian. Your family's crumbling, man. You're, you got breaks in the system. You got some leaks, right? You got some issues going on. That whole election thing, whether or not they, God's going to give them the means to be able to expose all that. And I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. Even so, come Lord Jesus. That's our prayer. But my goodness, man, you could tell some ain't right with it. Because the election ain't even over. Typical elections are done that night. And it's still going on. And you still have all these deals. What does that indicate? Something's wrong. Man, if you, if you are at the point of your Christianity still and you've been saved for however long, man, and there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no emphasis or there's no desire, rather, that's probably a better word, to be able to be alone with God and spend time, man, making, making things better. Because if you're a better Christian, man, wouldn't that mean you're a better husband? And if you're a better Christian, man, wouldn't that mean that you're a better wife if you're that? If you're a dad or if you're a kid? Wouldn't that make sense? Wouldn't that be that if God was clo you were closer to God, man, things would just work out a little bit better? It would. Yeah. Now, but if there's not that desire to want to make a change and the sacrifice and stuff, and there's not a desire to want to get God involved in what you're doing, then, then it's just the same old you again. And it could be the reason why you're just kind of going through the motions because you're not showing up on the radar, man. You ain't showing up on the map. Your Christianity doesn't, 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 doesn't affect anybody one way or another. And that's the, luke, the lukewarmness that you get in the book of, in the book of Revelation talking about our 2020 Laodiceans. The year's almost over. What you going to do about next year? You're going to have the same old, go. Oh, we'll get the, this year for sure. And then, you know, midway through the year, you realize, well, this year is a bust too. So instead of getting right, you can get right any time. You do not have to wait for a New Year's resolution. Amen? Right. Get right, man. It's a blessing. Man, it's great. Man, faithfulness. Uh, for my ability to be able to blow a horn, man, and get the troops rallied up and know what time it is, and everybody knows our responsibility, we know our order of business, we know our, our, our org structure, man, the, 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 the command chain, as they call it, or the chain of command, right, Brother Mike? We know who's where and what their roles are, man, and when the trumpet blows, everybody knows their position. Boy, but if you start blowing in some some old certain 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 sound, I think it over there, tinkering whatever over there, and it's like uh, I think it's uh, first first Corinthians chapter fourteen, and man, you got a Christianity that are like herding cats, brother. And every time you think that we're about to go ahead and, and, and round the curve because, you know, we got everybody that needs to be here is here and they're stabilized, amen. That whole thing is, is, is you know, that triage where you, you come upon a scene, you're a first responder. The idea is to stabilize the scene, stabilize the individual before we can go ahead and get them back, at least keep them from dying, amen. Well, when I first came here, the idea was uh, operation keep this place from dying, right, or if nothing else, Operation Lazarus. 
Go find the people that should have been here. Go figure out, you know, let's firm up the foundation, shore up the foundation rather, and make sure at least one, we got a place to meet, and two, people to show up. And then once we got that, once we start stabilizing the ministry, amen, the idea is starting to rehab and get everybody back in line and get back and recondition ourselves to know that, that Victory Baptist Church means something in, in Homestead, Florida. There's a devil out there, man. And he's talking to God, and God's talking to him. Matter of fact, if you got that right in Job chapter 1, God strikes up the conversations first. Hey, you ever considered Victory Baptist there, buddy? And they was like, what? Who? What? What'd you call that again? Who? Because if those guys, if you're talking about those group that meet behind the Nazarene church, that crew right there is what you're talking about, Lord? Well, what about them? <laughs> and I, I don't know if that ain't the case. I hope it would be like, yeah, I heard them. They were giving my boys a hard time over here, and they are giving my, my boys a hard time over there. I don't know, man. You'll find out one day. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. Proverbs chapter 6, look at verse 5. Deliver thyself. There's no Calvinism in there. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the who? Of the hunter. As a bird from the hand of the fowler. Amen. Go to the ant, thou slugger, and consider her ways, and be wise, right? Uh, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, old slugger? Uh, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Amen? That's the question. What What else do we, you know, and, and it doesn't surprise me that, that Trump is in the position he's in. I mean, we've had four years, almost four years now, of this guy winning and doing all this different thing. But my, my, my question would be, what's different about you? If, 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 if Donald Trump was or is supposedly the end all and the means of further success in America, however you want to cut it, however you want to present it, well, how did his, his presidency affect your Christianity? You win more souls under his watch? Did you read more Bible, amen? Did you recommit? Did you take another step? Did you graduate to another level as a Christian? I don't know. But I'll tell you this. I don't know what you're waiting for, man. Amen. And it could very well be seeing that, God, this is like the epitome of Laodicea, where you're rich and, with rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing. I don't need church. I got my stuff. And so who needs that? I still got another Visa card, so why do I need to be out there on the street today? Why do I, not, why do I need to structure my life as, as such? Why do I need to discipline myself to be a soldier for Jesus Christ, man? Well, well my cable and all this stuff is doing just fine. I just got a new set of cow. I got a new cow. I got some new shoes coming off of Amazon or eBay, and things are just happening. The Lord said, all right, well, let's see how that works because I'm going to pull them out. I'm going to put these socialists in there and see what happens, man. And then what? Now it's going to be you can't do it because they're in. Well, I don't know what the problem is with Christians, man, but I'm going to ask you this, like this over here in the book of Proverbs, look at verse 9. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou rise out of thy sleep? And you know what the characteristic is for, for Christians today? It's that. Go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. What are we talking about? Man, there's something out there that's biting. I don't know, man. It seems like there's something out there biting out the bit just to destroy your, your life. And here's the interesting part about that. God Almighty is that one that's going to give them the thumbs up. Or not. Thank God. Maybe right now it's, it's one of two things. One, God knows that at this point it's not going to be beneficial. And so you're going to get that hedge. You're going to have that. You're going to, he's going to maintain that hedge of protection around your life. Amen. But I'll promise if you're not taking advantage of the fact that you've got God's protection and blessing on your life, well, it's going to be, let's see how you work it out the other way. And, and, and I've been blessing you and carrying you along all these days, and you're not recognizing me. You're not responding to me. You're not participating in the ministries here that I've afforded you because it, it would not have been for God. This church certainly wouldn't have been where it's at today. You wouldn't be here for yourself. There wouldn't be no Victory Baptist Church, amen, if God wasn't in it. But if we're not taking advantage as a local church, man, taking advantage of the opportunities God's given us, and we just roll out them excuses, nope, can't, nope, sorry, God, uh-uh, nope, can't do it. Lord said, oh, yeah, whatever. I'm going to shut it all down. 
And you can go ahead and sit in your house and you can complain, you can write your book, you can get online, you can start a blog, you can get on Facebook, you can get on Twitter, all this stuff about the Democrats and the homosexuals and the Roman Catholics and the Masonic and the Masons rather than the Illuminati and the rock music and just go down that list and, and God's going to say, whenever you get done with that, man, let's you and I talk about you. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, look at verse uh, 11. Romans chapter 13, look at verse 11. And that knowing the time that is now, do you? See that knowing part? That's the great thing about being a Bible believer. Not every Christian is in that knowing kind of category, right? A lot of Christians don't know. But you're not those guys. You're not supposed to be those guys. I refuse to be lumped with those guys. However, what's worse, the guy that didn't know and doesn't do it or the guy that knows and doesn't do it? It's the guy that knows. So, you know, you're not going to be comfortable in a place like this. If you're not, if you, if your heart ain't right, if you ain't, you don't got a servant's heart, amen, you don't have a heart to serve God, you don't have a heart to, to take a position, amen, that might be uncomfortable, that might be a little distracting, amen, that might cause you a little something, then you're not going to like this. You're going to go find some other place. One is the best case scenario is just sit at home and then let the computer run you, which a lot of Christians are out there today. All they're doing is sitting home watching all this stuff, and they're, 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 they're not doers of anything. There are a lot of hearers. They'll listen to a lot of preaching. They know a lot of Bible, amen. They don't win souls or nothing. They don't take a shot in the neck for Jesus Christ. They don't stand up and bear his reproach, that's for sure. They don't do any of that. They're in a little comfort zone, man. It's just the thing they resigned a while back. They're, they see and they look at the cost it could possibly be. If I were just to go ahead and take that next step, I'm going to expose myself. It's kind of like coming out of the trenches, man. But the only way you're going to gain ground as a Christian is that you've got to come out of the trench. You got to come out, man, and when your commander, your captain, or your sergeant blows a whistle, there's already been a plan with all that. There's already been preparation. And what a sad day it would be that come, come to find out the reason you didn't win that particular battle is because uh, you just never responded to the whistle. You never responded to the call, amen? And the, the, saturating, the saturating, saturating bombing uh, bombing, or the artillery had already set it up. They knocked out every opposition that you had facing you. There was nothing out there, amen. All you needed to do is just step out of the trench and move forward. And you would have got the victory. You would have got the objective, amen. You would have raised the flag over there. But you never got up. Never walked forward. Never tried it. Never put on the shirt. Never showed up on the corner, amen. You never responded back to the text. I always find that odd, man. I don't understand Christianity. And then when you will run into people, everybody's like, Hey, ho, hey, ho, hey, ho, hey, hey, ho, ho, hey. Hey, 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 ho, oh, we didn't, man. Look at that. You look back at your life, man. You got all sorts of crazy things going on, amen. You're not explaining how this works. There's a devil. What do you mean you're not understanding how this works? You got a God in heaven that's saying, go get him. To you, on you, or towards you. You got a God in heaven, evidently, that can, can muster the devil. These satanic forces, man, and tell him, go ahead, go ahead, get my boy. You're his boy. You're a son of God if you're saved. And we keep playing and playing and playing and playing. And we get that, that mercy confused with acceptance or approval. Oh, it must be all right what I'm doing. It must be all right, right, that, that, that I ain't showing up or I don't have a level of commitment. Or, amen, I'm falling well short of the expectation that God has given me. Because, you know what, I still feel pretty good about it, man. I'm eating some spaghetti. I got some... Some garlic bread, amen, and some apple pie after this. And man, my favorite show is on Netflix, Netflix and we'll just binge watch, binge watch all these different whatever. And that's your Christianity. That's American Christianity right there. I just, just need it. And ain't no Bible there. Ain't no tracts. Ain't no persecution, amen. Ain't no ridicule going on. Nothing but compromise. Just surrendering everything back to the devil, man. You ever read about that when, when the Amorites, I think it was, uh, speaking of David back in the day, and they came and they stole all the stuff and they took his wives, remember that? And you know what David did? You know what David didn't do? David just didn't sit there and take it. You know what he did? He recovered all. You know what it took to recover all, the Bible says in 1 Samuel? He went over there and got it, amen? That man, he had to sharpen the sword, amen? That man, he put the armor on, get back up on a horse or whatever that meant. And man, if we were going to meet on a Saturday, we were going to meet on a Saturday. And everything that the devil uh, spent time just snatching out of our lives, amen? Taking our liberties, taking our joy, amen? Taking our peace, taking our happiness, taking our members. We're going to get them back. That's your, your role as a Christian. You're supposed to be that soldier. You're supposed to be that one that doesn't tolerate defeat. 
And if you do get defeated and you do lose a particular battle, amen, you learn from your mistakes, eh? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, amen? And you get back up on the horse, man, and you just do whatever it takes. And now you learn that that's this tactic there. You kept me out of the pot. All right, I see what you did. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And Christians, you're down to fool me a thousand times. Oh, who cares? Amen. What does it matter? It's all right, whatever. Church, no church. Ministry, no ministry. Devil, no devil. God Almighty, if there's a God, whatever. Most Christians live out are living out their, their Christianity like pra practical uh, agnostics. You can't know anything for sure. That's what agnostics mean. Ag agnostic is knowledge. Ag is whatever. Let's, you know, we, I, don't, I didn't take a lot man. I know that the devil did well, man, to dump down America, like stuff like that. Verse 11. And then knowing the time that is, it, it, it is high time. I mean, it's beyond time, man. It's beyond time to rally the troops. It's way beyond. You're, it's, it's high time to do what? Back to that again. Awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. You running out. You, you, this is a reference to time. So the Bible said, redeem the time for the days are evil. And yet it's day after day. It's hour after hour. And you know what? You know what Christians are? Man, they're just a big blank, man. Nothing there. Day two, nothing. Day three, nothing. Sunday, nothing. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Zero, 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 zero. That's one week. Now you go into the next week. Nothing, nothing. And, and it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. You get evaluated at work. Wherever you work, I know you got one. Whatever level. If you're in school, you got report cards. Amen? You have that. It's all around you. Everything that you pay attention to, you know because you know somebody's keeping track. Well, don't you know that God keeps track? Don't you know that God Almighty has a record? Don't you know that God Almighty is going to judge the quick and the dead at his, at his appearing? Do you know enough Bible to know that's what's coming your way? Amen. I try to encourage you, man. I love you, man. I love, I love you guys making food. I can care less about the food if it's keeping you from church. I can care less about the shirts and all that if it, if it means that you're embarrassed or whatever else. Man, I want you in church. I want you moving forward. I want you, man, to get up out of this church after hearing a message like this, man, on fire, man, and make a difference in your house. Make a difference, man, in your life. Make a difference at your workspace, man. Make a difference in this ministry. Show up, man. Do what you got to do. Take it by. It's called responsibility, man. That's called grow up. Right. And you got a devil out there, man, just biting at the bee. He's called the destroyer, man. And wants to destroy you. And you're going to be on your heels. You ain't going to be able to handle him. When God unleashes the cracking, whatever that lady was saying, we're going to unleash the cracking, you know, on the Democrats, whatever. and it may be or whatever else, but you know what? I know today's church. I ain't sitting there at the house, man. What, 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 what's going to happen with the Trump? How are we going to do What am I going to do with my Trump flag? I don't have a Trump flag. I got a King James Bible, though. And if, if, if Hillary was president, I told those people in Hialeah, man, we're going to show up to church. And if Donald Trump was president, man, oh, glory to God. It's like a little icing on the top. I was cool with that. I was pleasantly surprised, amen. But the question I'd have to you, if you think that and that's everybody, every Christian on Facebook for the most part, they think their, their Christianity rises and falls on the government. I don't know. Peter had Nero. Nero was burning Christians at the stake, man. Did, did Peter quit? Whatever Peter wrote, he, he, whatever Peter was doing, God put it in the Bible. Amen? Look at verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Get away from it. Stop already. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not as rioting. Man, we're not in Tifa, man, or Black Lives Matter and all that ridiculousness, but we'll do some preaching. And drunkenness, he's talking about Christians, man. And for the last three weeks or four weeks, we've been going over that in our little bulletin, amen. Why? Christians are full of, they're a bunch of drunks, man, Christians. A little social this, a little social that. Yeah, I know it. And how's that affecting your Christianity, man? You giving gospel track? Don't give gospel. Do not give a church track, man, if that's one of you. Please don't do that. Oh, yeah, here's my Bible ripple, man. By the way, Jesus loves you. Here, take one of these gospel tracks for Victory Baptist. Don't pray at the restaurant, man, if you got a bottle of whatever there. Stop. Repent. 
you got a devil out there. God said, uh, you know what? You know what time it is there, sir? It's time for me to unleash the Kraken on you. Snake, dragon, God help us. Verse 13, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife, amen, and envy. Verse 14, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions of the flesh, for the flesh rather to fulfill the lust thereof. You know what the provisions are? You get a bill every week. That's the provision for the flesh. You do that. You make sure that 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 uh, the rents due, the leases due, amen. The mortgage payment, amen. The cars, the provisions for the flesh. The cable channel, right? The cat food, amen. The 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 internet, the cell phone, and everything. All the entertainment. We gotta have all the CDs, all the video games, man. Everything that we do, we gotta make sure that we make provisions for this flesh because what's more important than trusting that and and providing for the flesh in America? Nothing. Lord said, I got edge of protection about you. I could change that in a day. You want to know real Christianity, man? Real Christianity comes through tribulation. Real Christianity comes through trust. Real tribulation comes to comes through leaning on God. But if you got all these things, amen, and you got this lifestyle deal, and you got this level of mediocrity going on, you ain't trusting God for that. You ain't trusting God for that. You've trusted your ability to be able to handle your business. It's what you've been doing. Because you're, you're smart, you can do this, you can do that and all that. And God's blessed you with a couple of deals, or at least he's allowed you, amen, to live a certain level. And there's nothing wrong with that, man, as long as God's in it. But, boy, you can get all this stuff, and all of a sudden you're living way here high on the hog, man, and you ain't serving God Almighty? How long do you think that's going to last? And let's just say it lasts your entire life, man. Do you know there's more to life than life? You know there's more in life than whatever you got stuffed in that garage, man, or whatever newfangled, whatever you got, and whatever account you just hooked up, and all the new things you got, and now you got this, you upgraded this, you upgraded that, and God Almighty's like, hold on, man. You're created for my pleasure. You're supposed to be pleasing me. I set you up in Dade County. I set you up in a Bible-believing church. I gave you another pastor. You're on your fourth one. This guy wants to take you out on the street, man. This guy wants to make shirts for you, man. This one wants to help you out. He said he's going to ride out with you. You going to ride out with him? Lord said, I'm about to re re release that destroyer on you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Man, I love God. Well, let's say it like this. I'm learning to love God, amen. I don't know if I love God. If you're truly in love with somebody, amen, it shows, doesn't it? Your wife picks up on it, by the way. Your husband pick up on it, by the way. Your kids pick up on it all the way. Giving your kids everything they want when they want it, that ain't love, by the way. That ain't that. That's pacifying. That's pacification, amen. That's, here, here, go get your stuff. Here, here's another phone. Here's another video game. Go over there in your room, man. Close up for about 18 hours, man. And come out with food and then go back over there. Real love is, you know what real love is, man? Spending time with individuals. You know what real love is, though? Real love is having hard conversations, man. That I do care enough about you to risk the fact that you may, may think I'm your enemy or you may think I'm out to hurt you, right? Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? That's the mentality. That's why most pastors, man, they ain't preaching out there today. It's all about pacifying everybody. Don't worry about it. There's never a verse like that. That can never be a situation in a Christian's life. I better, better qualify that before the, I erase it. He's a Christian. All right. I'll even prove it. I'll draw an arrow. <laughs> That's a Christian. This dude right here, he's saved just like you. He's saved. He's an AV 1611 Bible believer, man, and he's a he's a member of Victory Baptist Church. I'll say he or she. You do the math. You do the genetics. Amen. That could be you. That could be you now. Could be you last month. Could have been you within your Christianity. Could be you coming tomorrow. This thing right here is the big to do. There's something out there that God Almighty knows all too well about. He's the one that God knows about. He's the devil. He's the serpent. Amen. He's the, he's the accuser of the brethren, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, think chapter 12. And there's a devil out there. And go ahead, man. We just take advantage of the fact or take it for granted, rather, that we just got this little ministry in the backside of nowhere. Amen. And we just keep but day after day after day after day after day. What's changed? Well, nothing really, Pastor. What else we got going on? Well, I don't know how we just tighten up on the things we know to do first. 
How about we tighten up here? Maybe God's waiting to, to, to provide us with the increase, amen, when, 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 when we start getting consistent and serious about the level of stuff God's given us to deal with today. It's a little fox that just spoil the bone, the vine. It's a little bit here and slipping here and slip here. Man, you, you wouldn't tolerate that if that was going on with your, your, your internet. You wouldn't tolerate it if every other day it worked. Or your cell phone, you'd be, uh, you'd be a little irate. Hello, Mr. Barnett, Mr. Richard, we are here to help you reconnect yourself. I, I, I know all that. that I, you, want the, you want my address for the eighth time, and, you know, they start you off in Pakistan somewhere. And, you know, you're making some progress when you come back to the States. Hey, man, now I got Texas, and I think the most progress I got was from, from Chicago. Hello, Mr. Barnett, blah, 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 and going on. So, anyway, long story short, I haven't got no internet. What do you do? You go to church, find something else to do. Maybe you read a little bit more. Maybe it could be that. Maybe, maybe when the services in your life start bogging down and you make a fool out of yourself trying to get them reconnected, man, and how dare you, and, and when I'm paying for these services, and then here God is looking at you, and he says, you're bought with a price. I paid for your service, amen. How come you ain't working? How come you're working worse than AT&T, man? How come you don't have a level of consistency, man, where I can just go right up to the devil, man, and brag on you about him? How about that? You should want that. You should want that, man. Somewhere, somewhere up there in heaven, however that thing works, man, that God Almighty's bragging on this ministry, bragging on you as an individual, man, bragging on you as a dad, bragging on you as a kid, amen, knowing that all the peer pressure is out there for you to go to the left, amen, or the right, and you know what? You've stayed steady. You you've learned that no no I'm gonna I'm gonna flip I'm gonna make sure everything's fifty two face up I'm gonna do the right the right thing for the right reason instead of well everybody else is doing it and a little bit don't hurt now all of a sudden you jammed up and all this and now we gotta feel uncomfortable and you gotta feel uncomfortable and now you got the internet and now you texting this and texting that get no man just get right with God and you'll be surprised man God Almighty wants to bless you man but not when you're living like that He won't do it. He gonna send that destroyer, man. I promise you that. Uh, I don't even have to promise you, man. You read for yourself and you tell me what you get out of these verses. All right, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Look at verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you would be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and the sea and did eat the same spiritual meat, and did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. That's Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Verse 5, But with many of them God was not well pleased. How many? Many, many of them. So we got a big old guy, got a big old this, a big old that, and God said, Well, I had not seen much that I like so far, and most of you guys are very displeasing with the way you're doing your business. Verse 5, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples in the New Testament for you in 2020, amen? Knowing how God deals with people in the Old Testament, knowing how God deals with people in this, this, this Bible, amen? You, as, as the wise individual, you young ladies, or you young men, or you people, you dads and moms, or whoever you are, amen? These are examples so that you don't have to fall through the same deal. That there's these destroyers out there and God Almighty takes, amen? And understanding that the only way I can get my point across is to unleash the cracking in your life, man. Verse 5. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things. As they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters. This is all New Testament, as were some of them. So you look at the Old Testament and say, look at that guy over there. No, that's what you're doing. Or we say, look at that brother over there doing that. No, but that's what you're doing. There are different sins, man, and God's got all the angle on the sin. And because you are refusing to acknowledge a particular angle of sin, and like this brother here, it's very obvious that he or she's not here, and she or he or she's not doing the right thing or whatever. But you're, you're neglecting to identify and acknowledge the fact that there's a level of sin in your life, man, and you're as bad as them. And God forbid you're the one that knows more about it. Neither be ye idolaters as or some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to drink and rose up the what? Yeah, that's Christians today. The entertainment. Matter of fact, that's all churches these days. That's all I ever hear about these, these different ministries and all that different thing just to play. Not to preach. You need preaching, man. 
Verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed fornication. And fell in one day three and twenty thousand. In one day God wiped those individuals out. And you know who he wiped out? Those weren't the Egyptians. Those were God's people. And if you don't think he'll use that same mindset against you today in 2020 in Dade County, Victory Baptist Church, man, because your lack of investment, plus your lack of commitment in a church like this, amen, take heed lest you fall, verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Verse 10. Who are they? God's people. Who are we? God's people. Let's close with this. Psalms chapter 17. What are we talking about? Bro, there's something out there. Well, you, 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 you don't want that. You don't want that circumstance where then all of a sudden you find out at the end of that thing, God Almighty was responsible for sending that destroyer into your life. What you need is a haven of rest. What you need is a shepherd, amen, that knows there's a wolf out there. There's, there's a lion, man, a roaring lion that walking about seeking whom may devour. And, man, you're closer to the, to the shepherd. You're closer to the Savior as a result because you don't want to be caught up in that. You don't want to put yourself in the position where God Almighty says, Wow, now the only step I got left, the only way I can intervene so you get the message is an unleashing a destroyer in your life. And if you don't think he does that, you ain't listening. And if you don't think he does that, you don't read your Bible, amen. And you keep pointing at every negative aspect in your life is the devil trying to attack you. Well, yeah, he is attacking you, but I know this about God. Safety's of the Lord, and he's got a hedge of protection about you, man. And he got enough protection about you right here, right now, that you can show up. And you can make a difference. He got the means. He's giving you the help. You got a vehicle, amen, or you got a phone to call someone to come pick you up. Instead of making excuses why I couldn't yet do that again. That's over on this column. Stay away from that column. Stay away from that. You want the job well done column. You want the job well done so God give you a handful of purpose. Amen. Did that. Did that. Did that. Uh-huh. And did that. Uh-huh. I missed that one. But I got back on here and I missed that one. But I'm on task now, Pastor. And then there you go. I oh, mean, the exception proves the rule. The exception should never be the rule. The exceptions become the rule. Psalms chapter 17, we'll close. Psalms chapter 17. Psalms chapter 17, look at verse 1. <clears throat> you know, it's good to get right. It's good to be clean, amen. The Bible says, uh, 1 John chapter 1, 9, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what the problem with a lot of Christians? They hadn't confessed yet. They haven't, they haven't acknowledged the fact they got a problem. They'll sit through sermon after sermon about this man, get busted upside the head with these messages, man. The pastor will give them both barrels, and they'll just sit there and blink. And they'll know in their heart, because the Holy Spirit of God dwells there, by the way, and the Holy Spirit of God is telling them, that's it, that's you. And you just sit there and grind your teeth, man, and you just clench your fist on that deal. Is he almost done? Is he almost done? Is he almost done? Or, man, you know what? I ain't going to make it today. I know what they're doing there. I know I ain't about to get hit in the face. And I don't blame you. Man, who stands in front of somebody just to get slapped in the face? Man, if I knew you were about to slap me in the face because I was up to no good, I'd see you come I'd go the other way. And that's what Christians do, man. They come up with all them excuses. Why? I know why they don't show up. I know why a lot of times they do what they do, man. Why? I'm a Christian. Boom. Verse 1. Hear the right, O Lord. Attend unto my cry and give ear unto my prayer, please. That goeth not out of feigned lips. Is that word feigned? Verse 2. Feigned lips. Verse 2. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Verse 3. Thou hast provided my heart. Proved my heart, rather. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. See that word purposed? Underline that word. I am purposed. As a member of Victory Baptist Church, you should say to yourself, man, I'm purposed. I got things I got to do. I know it. I'm here. 
But if you ain't got that purpose, so the TV uh, church is nothing more than another television show. Sometimes you watch, sometimes you got, you see the game, and I missed it. You go to church, and I missed it. Comes, it, goes, it starts like that. Well, you know, Pastor, well, you know how it goes, amen. I do know how it goes. That's what I'm trying to tell you, man. That's not what you want that day of yours to turn out like. You don't want that. You don't want a conversation with your name popping up in heaven, man. The devil right there with these fallen whatever, these dead bulls around there. And then God say, you know what? Go ahead. Get them. Change your whole life. Verse 4. Concerning the works of man, by the word of thy lips, I have, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Now underline this, I have kept me from the past of the destroyer. You know what that meant? That meant David understood that he had a responsibility, man, to stay on the straight and narrow. That, that meant that he knew there was something out there that would destroy his life. He's already ran into the Amalekites. He's already ran into that stuff. He already knows what it's like to lose everything, amen? But thank God he had enough courage and much insight to get that stuff right. And then eventually he was able to recover all. Now, you got opportunities at Dade County, man, to make a difference in the lives of these people that God has entrusted to our care. I say it over and over and over and over again to you. And we're going to keep preaching and keep preaching and keep preaching until everybody recognizes we're a church with purpose, man. We got a purpose instead of just kind of like a TV show, just showing up and doing whatever. And then, why, bye, bye, bye. And what changes? Nothing. The Lord said, okay, I got something for you now. Because I know if you ain't going to get on your knees uh, by yourself, I can get you on your knees, man. And if you ain't going to get right by yourself, I'm going to get you in a predicament there that's going to get you right. Or else I'm going to destroy you. That's what that Bible says. That's the relationship of you and your God, amen. And you had never ought to take that God of yours lightly. And don't ever take him like so many as a joke. Father, thank you so much for Jesus Christ. Lord, we just lift up this church to you. And Lord, I, I pray you'd help your people. God, I pray that you just burden their heart to want to step up and represent before it's eternally too late. We got opportunities now, regardless of who's sitting in the White House. It's, it's the liberty that you've given us, not the government. And Lord, instead of just taking it for granted and Father, and just, uh, just pretending like I guess we just have all sorts of days to blow and to waste, Lord, that we take advantage of the fact. And God, knowing that the actions that we engage in not only affect ourselves, but sadly, they affect other people. And the lack of commitment affects the family. And the lack of commitment affects the ministry. And Lord, help us be that, though, individual that makes a difference. Lord, the one that will show up. God, that does have purpose. Lord, that, that knows that you see what we're doing. And God, that we have a desire to want to serve you and to please you. God, and we need that hedge of protection. And God, we do acknowledge your destroyer out there is trying to destroy our lives. So we do love and thank you, Father. Please help us, give us wisdom, understand, Lord, to do the right stuff for the right reasons. And we ask this now in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.